nurturingconnectionshomeschool.com where you will find encouragement and resources and free printables to help you connect with what matters most. In today's video, I am going to be sharing some lessons I've learned along the way. We have been homeschooling for 12 years now, so I currently have a 16-year-old, 12-year-old, and a 9-year-old that I'm homeschooling. And we have been through quite a bit, so I've been kind of reflecting on our journey lately and where we started, where we are, and I just thought I'd share some of the lessons that have been valuable to me in our own journey in hopes that they can help one of you along the way as you're going through or just give you some things to consider or a different perspective on some things that can hopefully help you see on the other side of things if you're just starting out or if you're still in the younger years, just some things that I wish I had known at that time as well. So I'm going to go through my list here. I took some notes here, but the very first thing I want to share is to know your why. Why are you homeschooling? Why did you choose to do this? What is it that is most important to you and your family? So I started my whole website because of my own journey in seeking out that why. What is it that I want to connect with most? What is most valuable? What is most important? And I had to ask myself that question because when you get into the homeschooling world, there is a ton out there. There are so many distractions constantly vying for your attention that if you don't know your why, it's very easy to lose sight of the most important things. So... I want to encourage you to take the time to know your why. Write that down. Where are, you, where are you headed? What is your vision for your homeschool? Understand what is most important so that you can also be prepared to fight for it. Fight for what's most important. You're going to have to battle the distractions. You're going to have to battle the comparisons. You're going to have to battle all the fears and things that you have going on inside you in order to get to your why. And so you'll want to make sure that you've taken the time to determine what that is and then be ready to fight for it as you move forward. Now, since I've gone through that process, I put together a whole video series called Ditch the Overwhelm in Order to Connect What Matters Most or something like that. So I'll link it below, but it takes you step by step through the process that I went through personally. But of course, however that looks for you, just taking that time to really pray and talk with your husband and decide, you know, what is it that's most important to us as our, in our family and um, putting that on paper somewhere so that you can have that as your vision as you're moving forward. And, um, and it's also something to go back to from time to time as you have new ideas that come in. So for example, our why is we really wanted to give our, our children a heart for God, a heart for family and relationships, and a love for learning. And so anytime we'd have a new activity or co-op or thing that came into our life that wasn't accomplishing those goals. It was easier to let go of those things because we knew where we were headed. So having that piece is so very important. Number two, don't stress about the extras. Now I shared a little bit of this in a different video, but when we first started homeschooling, I stressed a ton. I was so fearful of falling behind, of we have to do this, we have to do that, or this website says I have to do all these things and that one says I got to that one says I have to do all these other things and I piled on too much sometimes and so stressing out about it constantly adding on more things adding more check boxes just led to me being more stressful and therefore being more frustrated maybe more irritable at times, and just not being able to enjoy the journey as much as I would have liked to in those early years. In those early years, the most important things are going to be loving your children, forming those healthy attachments with your children, nurturing their hearts. Um, It'll be focusing on training, training them on routines, training them on good habits, how to dress themselves, and how to take care of themselves, how to steward their belongings well, how to help out in the kitchen, how to work together as a family. You're doing all of this training, but you're establishing a foundation for future learning to take place. 
So focusing on that training, that attachment with your children. Um, I have here kid interests. Your children are coming to you with God-given talents, abilities, gifts, interests. Being open to those interests is going to be so very important. It's easy to feel like you have to do what this curriculum writer somewhere else said is important. But if your child has this desire to learn about something different, being open to that is going to be really important to enjoy the journey for the both of you. So finding ways to embrace their interests, um, explore them further even for yourself, and kind of see how that fits into the big scheme of things. It's all part of their education. It's all part of their learning. And in case you don't know this, um, a veteran homeschooler told me this and I didn't believe her. And now I'm here and I'm like, okay, I'll share it with you too. They're going to forget a lot of what you do in those little, little years. And I know that's so depressing to say because when I heard it, I was like, what? You know, we're doing all these hands-on things and we're making foam and this and that and the other. And we took great pictures and I'm glad we did because the pictures helped them kind of be like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. Um, but for the most part, they're not going to remember all the details. So don't stress out about it. You're going to teach a lot of these things again and again and again. They may remember those special books. They're going to remember how they felt when they were with you on those field trips and things like that. You'll get to look back on some of those sweet memories together. But as far as stressing out about trying to do everything and during that time, it's not worth it. You'll have plenty of time in the later years to go over those topics again, to read more books on it, and to refresh their memories here and there. But um, don't stress. Have fun. Enjoy the journey. Focus on the three R's, reading, writing, and math in those little years. And of course, all the other stuff that I shared about training and things like that. But anything else is extra. Everything else is more for fun and just for cultivating that love for learning and as they go through you just do the next thing so with reading you just do the next thing with writing you do the next thing in math and so forth don't try to always stay on a timeline with every single child they're not all going to fit into the same mold in the same box some are going to zoom through and some are going to take a little bit longer and my encouragement to you is don't stress just do the next thing stay faithful Stay consistent, but do the next thing and support your child wherever they are. Number three, it's okay if it's hard. It's okay. That was hard for me <laughs> because I would look at these overlays on social media and the kids were all smiling and having these amazing little things that they were working on. And granted, my homeschool looked like that a lot of times, but as they were growing and as we were doing more challenging subjects it got hard at times and it got really hard there were tears sometimes and there was always that temptation to want to rescue my children to get in there and well, let's just get another curriculum or you know we don't have to do that page right now and although there's a time for that you know I'm not gonna lie there are times that we have to use that discernment and pray for discernment but it's okay if it's hard. That's part of life and part of our homeschool is preparing our children for life and for the future. And so we have to be able as parents to take that step back and let them work through that struggle at times. It's like that butterfly coming out of the chrysalis. It's painful at times, there's tension, but that butterfly needs that tension to grow and to be able to fly. And our children will need that as well. So if we come in and we coddle them constantly and make life easier for them constantly because we don't want to see them struggle and we don't want to see them cry, we're going to do them a, more of a disservice in the future when things are truly going to get hard because life has its ups and downs and challenges. Our job is to equip them for that journey, not to enable them to give up more easily. So something to keep in mind, I struggled with that early on. If you also struggle with people pleasing somewhat, then it may also be more of a challenge to you if your children look at you and are like, I don't like you or something because they're upset because they're not getting their way or it was too difficult. 
you're going to have to look at what love does in those moments. And love is patient and it's kind, but also love looks out for the best interest of others. And the loving thing to do is to guide them through that, to encourage them, to teach them how to persevere. I used to tell the kids sometimes when they would do a difficult math lesson and they hated it and were so upset. And I'd be like, you know, today we're not learning math. Today we're learning how to persevere. Today we're learning how to overcome. Today we're learning how to get through the hard stuff in a way that is kind, that honors God, in a way that's going to help you grow as a person. And so keeping that in mind, it's okay if it's hard. Now I will say pray for discernment because there are going to be times that you will have to make some adjustments for your children and I'm not saying don't ever do anything that will make things easier. Um, but it is important to make sure that you don't think just because it's hard, it's not working. Sometimes the hard is exactly what both of y'all need to grow. So keeping that in mind. Number four, um, don't try to do it all. Don't try to do too much. Sometimes less is more. I found that the days that I had the least amount of things on my schedule were often the days that we all enjoyed the most. I mean, bottom line, there was margin in our days. We could laugh a little more. We could take that extra little bit of a walk. We can enjoy that game together. It wasn't so, go, 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 check, 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 check. Let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. When children have constant, constant, constant activity after activity after activity, they tend to get really overstimulated. But it's not just our kids that do that, it's us too. We get overstimulated, we're not as nurturing as we should be, and we tend to create this chaotic environment where no learning can take place. Learning can only happen when children feel safe, when they feel loved and nurtured, and so we want to make sure that, yes, it's okay if it's hard at times, but we also have to find that balance and leaving time in our days and space in our days for the unexpected to happen, for those accidents to happen, um, those little spills and things like that. It's not going to derail us completely. We have that margin built into our days for those extra things that come along, whether they're planned or unplanned. Um, it gives us time to either enjoy them more or to work them in and enjoy the rest of the day more and so forth. Number five, don't compare. Comparison is the thief of joy. If you look around you and you're constantly comparing your homeschool to others, your children to others, your what you're learning to the public schools or the private schools or your friend's homeschool, you will always struggle. You're always going to feel like you're missing out on something, you're going to feel less than in many cases, or you may feel arrogant in others, which isn't good either. You want to find that place where you're just seeking the Lord. He created your family exactly like he wanted it to be. He knew what y'all needed. He put you in your home, gave you this opportunity to minister to his children, and so he calls you to be faithful through that by seeking him. So it will look different. It's supposed to look different and be okay with that as well. You may have children with special needs. And so your homeschool is not going to look anything like your neighbors if they don't have children with special needs as well. You may have a child that is twice exceptional or a child that has unique gifts and, and interests that don't necessarily fit into the mold of your friends and that kind of thing. So anyway, it will look different. That's okay. Don't compare. Know that all of those things you see on social media, those are the highlights. And I love celebrating the highlights. Those are the things that we strive for. You know, when I share a picture of a project that my kids have done or an accomplishment that we've done, that's the highlight. What we're not showing is what it took to get there. We didn't show the tears that we had overcome when it got hard. We didn't show the struggles, the tension along the way. We're showing the highlights and that's what people are sharing on social media. They're either sharing the accomplishments that have come after an incredible amount of work and dedication and commitment or they're lying. Bottom line, they may have a whole mess and they're all smiling for the picture and then they all get back to chaos and that's not reality either. So 
keep that in mind as you go through your journey. It's going to look different. It's okay. You're going to have your own highlights that you can celebrate as well. And um, keep it real. Keep it real. I did want to share here, I put Bucket Planner because I do have that bucket planning system that can hopefully take you through that process if you are still in need of wanting to see what does my homeschool stand for? What are, what are the most important things to us? So I talked a little bit about vision early on in number one, but this deals more with the specific topics to go over with your kids, the specific learning opportunities, goes into all of that. So that same link will take you through all of those videos and that video really just targets finding what works for you and your family. That is the most important thing. God, again, created each of us for such a time as this. And so walking in our callings and in our purpose for his glory is going to be so important. So don't compare. Don't be looking around. Get ideas. Yes. Get inspired. Yes. Celebrate others. Yes. But don't compare your journey and your walk with others. Number six, my attitude matters. Your attitude matters. You as the mother, as a homeschool mom, are the heart of your home. If you grumble, your kids are going to grumble. If you're excited about learning, they're going to get excited about learning. It doesn't mean they'll never grumble, but they're going to be more apt to get excited with you. They always say more is caught than taught, and that is so true. I used to hear um, my kids are my mirrors, but scientifically we have mirror neurons in our brains that we, when we see something else, we will mirror it often, especially in those early years. And it goes back to if I start yawning, you're going to start yawning. And maybe just talking about it makes you want to yawn. But your kids were designed to mirror you, to imitate you, to watch you and learn from you. And so God in his grace and mercy has called us as parents to be sanctified through that parenting journey to be more like Christ. And if we don't rise up to that, we're going to see it in our children. <laughs> I once heard a pastor say, if you don't deal with it, you're going to pass it on to your children. And so if you are struggling with a grumbling spirit, then I want to encourage you to renounce it. Pray without ceasing so that the Holy Spirit will help you to walk in joy, to help you walk in peace so that you can then pass that on to your children. If you struggle with tardiness or bad habits or whatever it is that you struggle with, the more you work on those skills and grow as a person, the more your children will also grow. And so it's that win-win relationship that helps our families grow and continue in our sanctification and faith journeys. Number seven, don't scroll. Pause break here. If I could go back and talk to the younger me who had little ones still running around, I would tell me to put down the phone, put it down. And I know that our phones are highly exciting. They give us a dopamine rush every time we get that thumbs up or that like. It becomes highly addictive. Um, in many ways, scientifically, we know if you've never seen The Social Dilemma, I encourage you to watch it. These social media apps are designed to make you addicted to your phone. So they will pop up images right before you're about to sign out just to keep you on there as long as possible. Friends, this is going to steal your joy. It's going to steal the time you have with your children, and it's going to steal the ability to be present with your children. You may feel overstimulated and then you get frustrated or irritable and you can't handle the little things in front of you because now you've taken on everything from outside your home. Sometimes all of that leads to fear, it leads to anxiety, sometimes you may become resentful because you see someone else having something that you wished you had in that moment and it just takes away from your real world right now, right here. God has placed you in your home with those children for a specific purpose and reason. And when you can learn to embrace that space and learn to enjoy what he's given you in that season and not constantly be seeking for more and more and more, 
stimulation or input or something along those lines. That's where you'll find true peace, true contentment, true joy. And so it's something that has been a personal struggle for me. I know that I'd get on and all of a sudden I wanted to right every wrong in the world and it was this distractor from what was most important. The enemy will use our weaknesses to take us away from the most important things, to steer us away from the holy calling we have in our home with our children in our homeschools. And so that's a lesson I wish I had learned early on that I'm just sharing with you in humility in hopes that it can encourage you to kind of take a step back and reflect on that further if it may be an area that you're struggling in as well. You won't get this time back. And if there's anything I've learned in this journey is that it goes by so very fast. I, I can't even believe how quickly it's gone by. My kids are so much older. We're past these little years and I look back and I just get so emotional because it's gone. It's it, That's it. I had my chance. And so I don't want to miss what's in front of me now. And I'm just taking these lessons to heart for myself as well as I continue on. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, just to really embrace the season wherever you are and be present, enjoy it. And then number eight, trust the Lord with it all. Trust him. Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. Seek him in everything. You could have all the pieces in place, but if you miss him, you've missed the most important thing, I believe. And so I want to encourage you to keep your eyes on him. There are going to be things that get thrown at you along your journey that will try to derail you from his purpose and plans for your children and for yourself. And so keeping your eyes on him means that you will end up where you're supposed to end up, even if it looks different than what you expected early on. So being open to that, trusting him with it all, trusting him with the lives of your children, and just being faithful every day to enjoy the journey, embrace the journey, be present through it all, and do all that you can to nurture those connections with your children. So those are eight lessons. Of course, there's many, many more. This journey is about learning. I used to say I was the student, not my kids, because I was the one learning so much about life and sanctification and faith and following the Lord through homeschooling. And you may find yourself in that same position. Be open to learning. Be open to um, growing alongside your children and just enjoying that journey together. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please just give me a thumbs up on your way out. I may be out for a few more weeks, if not the summer, as I seek to nurture the connections with my own children. We have a lot going on with pandas and pens and everything that comes with that. So I will hopefully share an update when we're on the other side of things. But for now, I hope this was helpful and encouraging to you. I have a number of videos on here and my website that has more resources and blog posts that I hope can encourage you and help you in your own journeys as you seek to connect with what matters most. Thanks for watching and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.